Hey, hey everyone. So, well, thank you. Um, well, it's intimidating, as I thought, so many people here today. But at the same time, I'm excited to share uh, a little bit of my story. So, yeah, so my call is titled uh, Adding More Art into the Blend, the Blend file. And I guess that's what I'm trying to do every time I'm using Blender, both uh, professionally or personally. Um, and I will explain why and how. Um, so, introducing myself quickly, briefly. So um, you can call me Kenji Aito. Well, that's how you can find me on that station. But actually, my real name is uh, Jonathan de I'm a Frenchman. Maybe you figured that one out already. <laughs> so um, France, but my life is basically, this is a graphical representation of my life. Um, from France to a small island called Bora Bora to Japan. It's uh, just a bigger island, you know. And um, well, <clears throat> during all this time, I've um, been doing different kind of jobs, just taking opportunities and things, and well, it was just to make money, and I was not really doing something I really like. And well, things have changed since I got into Blender and I became a freelancer. And now, yeah, the fun begins, and I have much things to do, and yeah, it's getting exciting. So in the past, um, I used to play with a bunch of software. In 2001, I went to my archives. I don't know if you guys remember this, Bryce 3D. This is very old. Yeah, beautiful. And this is Boolean workflow uh, back then. <laughs> yeah, was but that was taking hours to render. It's like crazy. Yeah, anyway, um, so that's it for the archives. Got into Blender version 2.79, so I think this is before EV. And the first thing I noticed is how the software was good. I mean, it's just light and responsive, fast and stable. And of course, I, like, I, I love the GUI. I love the UI, how you can customize it and things like this. So the first thing I did, almost, yeah, was to make a, a 3D teapot. Because um, I used to play with other packages, 3D packages, and they had teapots. And so, so I'm going to make a teapot. This one is kind of overkilled, like millions of polygons sculpted by hand. I did all of dots by hand. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a, kind of <laughs> so it's when I started, you know? And yeah, so it's a great software. It's a free software, and you can learn it for free. I mean, at least all my beginner intermediate steps were covered like by the community. And well, just to name a few, there are more people who contribute to it every day. And I want to thank you, everyone uh, for the community work behind Blender. A special note about CG Boost. Um, basically, I got into CG Boost by uh, joining one of their challenges. Um, so that's, that's old work. So when I look at that, it kind of hurts my eyes now. <laughs> but it's, it's nice. You, you can look at your own work in a way that you, know, you can analyze it and how, what, what got better, what changed since then. Um, so I did this one, and then another one, a bit different character. Um, and I got the first place for this one. So I was like, yeah, it's great. I want it. And I got some goodies and prices and things. But more importantly, I could ask some questions to CG Boost team. And I basically sent an email asking, you know, um, do you think I could find a job and work as a freelancer? And um, I was not confident that I could find one. And I had some great coaching time with Alan Plain um, directly, um, Skype with me. So a guy I never met before helped me really and started to send a few emails. And I got my first contract at EgoSoft. So it's a German game studio that works on the X, uh, X series. I uh, used to play the game like 15 years ago or something X2. So, so. So yeah, you take care of the big, big, big assets, like space station like this one. So this one goes in as inside an asteroid, uh, literally through the asteroid. It's made of many, many parts. Um, and that's what's one thing I've learned from uh, EgoSoft and the art director there, Lino Thomas, is here today. Um, so I learned many things. And among those things, yeah, the reusability of the assets. So you know, A and A2, it's the same objects, just different modifiers, just like B and B2. So you work smart, you work a bit lazy, but this is the way you know, to trick the eye. So it looks like it's a huge space station, but it's actually made of just a few parts. And when you work on a big asset like this one, it's like three kilometer long spaceship. Yeah, when you have this level of details, when you get close or at the back of the ship, uh, yeah, you, you have to be smart. And it's like keep bashing, but a bit more than just making small parts. You have different size of parts, and you have to assemble them all together. But let's go back to, to, to when I got my job, because th those, those things I just showed you, this is not the first assignment I got. But anyway, so at the beginning, um, well, actually, I, I did learn, like, it took 10 months for me from downloading Blender to get a, a contract. So I was kind of pumped up and happy about that. Um, but I was like, OK, chill, man. You just started, so you're still a beginner, and you have much things to learn. And I wanted to keep the job as well, because you, know, you have to improve somehow. Also, I wanted to explore more about CGs and things, because it's not just, I mean, there's so many fields in CGs. It's like it's a huge thing, and I think it's great. So I wanted to you know, get into personal projects. I think it's the best thing you can do, even if you have work, and even if it keeps you busy, to 
practice and get better exploring new things. And the first thing I thought is like, I wanted to, you know, I was looking at this kind of picture. You don't have to read everything, it's just for illustration, but basically complex pipeline from the industry, you know. So you have a lot of software import and exporting and everything. And I thought, I should make personal projects that kind of reflect that. So there will be some kind of small pipeline in what I was doing. And nothing great came up from that. So for example, here, I, I did modeling with moi 3D. It's an obs-based modeler, like Fusion 360. I used Substance Painter and uh, Cycles. Uh, we're rendering in Blender Cycles and some Photoshopping and things. And this, this is not good. I mean, I don't think it's good. I and mean, design-wise, it still looks like a box. And when you look at even the texturing, it's kind of obvious oh, too white. So you know, I took all this damage and this wearing of the textures and things. But yeah, the lightning is off probably as well. And the camera, the camera is like too low, so these things look big as it should be like as small as that. So it doesn't make much sense. Uh, at that time, again, trying all the things that was taking a lot of time, and it just, just looked like a cylinder. It lacks of, you know, the profile, the shape is not great. The silhouette is not interesting. I was just go spending a lot of time in tiny details like this, this thinking this is going to make a difference, but this doesn't make a difference. I think I was not seeing, you know, the main, the main thing about design and things. So what I concluded, like, after a while, actually, because I, I could not figure out what was wrong, what I was doing wrong, you know. So this is kind of a metaphor. So if, if you want to get to this kind of result, and quality of this result. And you basically have different set of tools. So you have a player one, he has a super high-tech tool, like the plasma cutter. And another guy, he has just a, a set of chisels and a hammer. But this guy, the guy with the chisels, he has a very good anatomy skill. So he knows the body proportion and the, you know, the position of the muscles and things. Of course, we all know that this guy has more chance to get there than the guy with a super high-tech tool. I don't mean by that that we have to go back to Stonehenge to make good art and use simple tools, but at that time, I was certainly the guy with a plasma color because I was trying to use complex tool. I was not using them at their full potential, and I was forgetting the things like skill, like design, how to design something interesting to the eye and things like this. And indeed, yeah, I think tools are a mean to an end. You know? So the end is the thing you can visualize when you get skills, like you, you imagine the shape of what you're trying to do. Um, for, at least for me, the objective to use tools is to make art something that is pleasing to the eye. You know, the shape is interesting, people are into it, and things like this. So I prefer to use tools that I know. So I use them like a second nature. It's not like, like going in edit mode, edit mode in Blender using the knife tool. I know there is a C shortcut, I can cut through, I can snap angles, and stuff like that. So they are simple, but powerful, and I think this is the way. So, Basically, I started to change my state of mind and say, instead of going everywhere and get distracted, trying always the best tool, and you have a lot of companies, they release new tools, you, know, you want to get inside and try them. I keep focusing on staying in Blender. We have a lot of tools, and I try to focus on doing good art. So this is the way I put it, be your own art director, but this is what I'm telling myself, like, you know, the art director is directing you to do art, basically. Sometimes it doesn't tell you, you know, you have to use this workflow or that workflow. The most important thing is, the result, the artistic things. Right? So I tried again. So some time has passed since then, because at that time, I couldn't understand really what was going wrong. And well, I don't have time to go in through all the things, but this is things I've done. Um, so mostly cinematographic stuff and trying to get into lightning. Um, this one, oh yeah, you, you can check on our station for those things. I don't have time to go through them. And um, this one um, is not on a station yet. It's a work I did for Royals and Rogues. It's, um, it's a Dead Space inspired lab, so it's a bit dark. But yeah, anyway, um, it's kind of scary. It's going to be a short movie, and it's going to be cool, I think. Um, and I want to take this one is 100% um, personal, and I want to, 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 to give you a few tricks about my workflow and the way I work with this one. So it's called Biomass Raiders. So those guys, they just use portal technology to get into other worlds because they realize that you know, plants are valuable things. Um, so yeah, close up here, again, so close up on the geometry, um, the house surface modeling parts. Inside the pool also, in this project, I had a lot of fun doing the natural environments. The trees and the stone are personal photo scan, so I could enjoy you know, photo scanning things. I use Grasval for the plant composition and things. Um, you know, I lose less and less add-ons, as a matter of fact. But I like when they don't really focus on artistic composition. So, you know, it's straight to the point. They have great quality assets, and I really can compose my things, natural things. I think it's a great add-on, yeah. Um, this is a data of the containers with the plants inside, and you have those um, robotic arms to place the, the containers on the racks. This is behind the racks. Just trying to take some shots from different angles, stuff like that. 
Um, one thing I've really changed is really thinking before I actually do anything. So even when I go for a personal project, try to visualize as much as I can in my head. You know, before I used to like starting Blender, I had the default cube. I put Suzanne in, and I was like, I'm gonna make some art from there. And and of course, nothing came up. <laughs> it's just not not great. So I think before it, I don't even sit in front of the computer trying to visualize what I'm trying to do. Like even the camera, the perspective, as much things as you can. It's a good training, by the way. But do it wisely. Like technically, you don't go for things you're not sure you can finish them. So I got this rule: 60% stuff I know. So hot surface modeling because I do that a lot and 40% of new stuff, like character or natural environment stuff. Now, this is the block out of that work I just showed before. So, well, nothing special. I use the grease pencil all the time to put notes everywhere and do those, trying to remember things, because sometimes I don't have time and just put some notes. Oh, I should do this here and there. You know, it's very, very cool. So I have all the notes, I guess, yeah. And now that I work, like, really in Blender, I realize that starting to have early lightning in the scene is super nice. It used to be more like this before. So, you know, I was using the matte caps. And when you see that, it's a lot of geometry. It just make a mess. You have no idea of the depths of the scene and things. You know, it's hard to really, you know, know where it's going, where's the attention, where's the focal point, as opposed to this, right? So you have the lightning and all the stuff, the, the background noise there. It's all filtered, and you have the focus point on the character there. Um, and indeed, before, yeah, I had this kind of picture of, you know, the sequential workflow, I call it. So from modeling to rendering, step by step, and now that I'm inside Blender and I'm really focusing, well, I'm staying inside Blender, I realize that I can be really more free in my workflow. So I can start modeling, I put a few lights, and then the volume makes a difference. You know, the perception of the volume is totally different, really. This is amazing. So you can then texture and come back and forth, and at all time you have the rendering happening because you have EV, you have cycles, so you have visual feedback of what you do. And this is really speeding up the creative process, I think. Got to look cool in the viewport is one of my motto too. It used to be different. I used to hurry to press F12, get a render, and if it was not good, I was just going to Photoshop and trying to make it better. Now I adjust things as much as I can, trying to make, put more lights if I need to or change anything. I can do that. I'm in Blender, so you know, everything's possible. Then I have to export, import again, and stuff like this. Yeah, quickly on that, linked copies. It's, I like the way Blender managed the object things. So for example, for the portal, actually, uh, I modeled the part in A. In real time, I could see how it looks like in B when there is um, an array and a curve modifier to it. So I can reuse those parts. It's like a kit bash, but you have a lot of control, right? Because it's the part you made, and you have all the modifiers still on. Um, yeah, nothing special on this one, just you know, the texturing with stream sheets and stuff. And this is all the assets in the scenes, so not so much asset if you think about it. Um, I love to use the collection as well. So I make one collection, let's say, for the beam, and then it's instanced many times. So I change one collection, all the collections are changed. Um, trim sheets, well, this is the way to go for me now. Um, with, um, um, because, uh, well, trim sheeting for outsource face modeling is great, especially when you have a, as a good trim sheet like this one. Um, before, I could not really tell what was better than others. This one is nice. You have some dielectric parts. You have some parts with more like uh, metallic materials and soft, soft areas for the rest areas and high-intensity high details. And this one is so great that it counts for like 75%, I think, of all the, the textures. So all the red stuff is this, this trim sheet I just showed you. And you have a blue one and a, and a green one, and all the white stuff is uh, materials without any textures, so it's just normal shaders. Uh, for those shaders without textures, uh, I love to use vertex control, vertex color, I mean. For example, here for uh, the emission strengths, it's very cheap. You don't have to load any texture, and I'm using, of course, noise texture and stuff. Um, well, you know, Voronade noise, and everything. it's all the procedural texture in Blender. You don't overload your VRAM with um, grunge map or stuff that will just slow down your viewport and your rendering, so trying to use those as much as I can. More randomness again with the object info node. You probably know this one. You have the random output. Well, you can use it, but this is just an example, but I love it. And you have the location as well. You change a little bit location of an object, and you can have some randomness as well. So those are just nodes, but they are so useful. I did from AI, yeah. So I did a few prompts in uh, mid-journey, and I thought, well, it's not bad. So you know, just design the, the character depending on that. I used the close brush for the first time. This is how great it is to stay in Blender. It took me like 30 minutes to check for some tutorials and use the close brush, and the result was good enough for what I was doing. So I said, yeah, let's go for it. So it was done in no time. I didn't have to use another software. It was just so fast. Um, same out surface, soft surface. When I go for the padding on the wall panel, uh, it's done inside the same blend file. I don't export and don't re-import anything. It's just done there. So it's great. So I can all test my settings, 
And if I wanted to, I could go to the close brush to put more detail. So imagine it's really different from the approach where you would go to Marvelous Designer, do it, and then add more detail in ZBrush, and then send it over to Blender. For what I'm doing, it's just working just fine. Well, quick on that, photogrammetry, trees, yeah, those are just stuff um, I took, did myself. It's not very important. And um, yeah, a pipeline for you know, photogrammetry, my own picture, mushroom, cleaning in Blender, and then speed tree for all the generating, all the node base, you know, the, the branches, the twigs, and the leaves and stuff. So prospect, well, since I started to work like this in Blender, really, I felt like there is way more things I can tackle, and I really feel like more freedom in what I do. I want to experiment more. I want to try more things. And one thing I really want to go into is animation, because I know Blender does that beautifully. Um, and it's another way to you know, get in more advanced storytelling, really. If you can add some music to it and things, well, I guess this is just yeah, great. You can, reach emotion, you can build more emotions around. Blending style, it just means I want to experiment more styles, you know, getting out of the style that we usually see, or those I did, I did too much and things, trying to mix things together. And may, eventually, this will bring me to a world-building project. I have a lot of ideas in my head. I don't have time to go through all that, but uh, we can talk today or any day if you want to. So. Um, this is something I always have in mind. This is like my last slides. Um, this is my concern about form and content in art in general. So when you Google form and content, Google tell you to give you those. So the two circles and inter intersection is art. Um, and I did the form bigger because I think that sometimes we do tend to spend a lot of um, effort uh, and money into form, and we tend to neglect that content is also important, and that doesn't make art better or bigger somehow. And I think it's not just me, to, it's just not just me telling you stories. You know, when I think about the indie games and how they get more popular these days, um, well, this is again me asking Bing, which is actually uh, GTP4 now. And um, the answer, well, so I'm asking, are indie games getting more popular and why? Well, basically the answer, we don't have to read everything. It's just say that uh, indie developers spend, I think, more time to make more interesting content. And, and as you know, the form is usually simple, and simple can be good. I mean, I never said that form is, is, more, is, is less important than content. If you have a bad form and the content, you have a good content, well, people won't connect to it. So you need a, an interesting form still. But I'm just saying that I feel sometimes that, well, the content thing is, um, and yeah, and we're living in times you know, with AI and things, give it five years and something, I think all the AI things is generating form. You can ask AI to generate literature for you or good looking images or soon 3D models and they will be good. But, but what's the point behind? What's the message? What do you want, you know, what do you want to build with all these things? So, um, yeah, well, that's kind of my point for the former and content, and that's something I want to really insist on and work on things more. Anyway, with Blender, we have a free software. We, we can get free education for it, or almost free. Sometimes they have free paid, co uh, yeah, paid courses, but honestly, they're worth every penny for all those courses I try. And we can get jobs from there. Like, okay, I did that, and there are many others who did this. And I think it's amazing. So thank you really, really for Blender Foundation and all those things. And yeah, we are still free to create anything with that. Anything that we want it goes through our minds. No limits. So yeah, I think it's great. So thank you, everyone, for today. And <laughs> yeah.